Today, I'm comparing the original 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro to the last and fastest fully specced out 2020 Intel iMac specifically for photo editing. I'll be doing processing and export tests in Lightroom, browsing speed tests, tests in Photoshop, as well as a few other general tests. The M1 family of processors has proven to be quite capable, so can the first and most basic generation of M1 compete against a much beefier Intel iMac? By the way, here are the full specs for each computer. The M1 MacBook Pro only costs $1,300 US, while the 2020 iMac costs $4,900. First test is in Lightroom, being copy and paste test to see how long it takes to paste effects. Using photos taken with the Sony A7S III, which has 12 megapixels and 25 megabyte photos, pasting effects to 77 photos takes the iMac only 1.61 seconds, and the M1 1.74 seconds. Basically the same, and honestly probably not even worth testing, but I did want to try another test using the Nikon D780, which has double the megapixels at 24 and 28 megabyte photos. This time I pasted effects to 409 photos, which took the iMac 3.88 seconds, and the M1 was a little faster at 2.7 seconds to paste effects. Moving on to export tests in Lightroom. I used the same group of photos from the previous example and exported first in PNG and then in JPEG. Things were significantly slower than the copy and paste tests. Exporting to PNG, the Sony A7S III's 77 photos took the iMac 3 minutes and 23 seconds, or 3.38 minutes, while the M1 was almost twice as slow at 6.52 minutes. Exporting to the much more compressed JPEG format took the iMac 1.25 minutes, and the M1 was actually a little faster now at 1.15 minutes. Turning up the testing difficulty level and exporting 409 Nikon D780 photos to PNG took the iMac 46.1 minutes, which seems like a really long time, but the M1 was basically a whole hour slower at one hour, 40 minutes, and 55 seconds. It's insane how much faster JPEGs are able to process because the same round of photos was only 9.15 minutes on the iMac, and the M1 was surprisingly just right behind at 9.17 minutes to export to JPEG. The M1 is generally holding up so far, disregarding the PNG export, that is. Next round of test is seeing how smooth each Mac can browse through photos. First, using the Sony a7S III, and shuffling through raw photos isn't super smooth on the M1, taking approximately 667 seconds to flip between photos, while the iMac skips through the raw photos without delay. For PNG versions of the photos, the M1 reduces load time to 417 milliseconds, and the iMac takes about 458 milliseconds to get to the next photo. The last and easiest file format, JPEG, shuffles stutter-free on the M1, while the iMac takes about 292 milliseconds. I tried this round of tests with the Nikon D780, which slowed the iMac to a load time of 1.29 seconds for raw photos. The M1 was a little quicker at 833 milliseconds. For PNG, the iMac took one second, and the M1 was faster again at 667 milliseconds. And lastly, for JPEG, the iMac was still a little bit slower, taking 250 milliseconds to preview the next photo. And the M1 previewed each photo without delay. For the next round of tests, we are in Photoshop. I wanted to test smoothness because there's nothing worse than working on a photo and your computer lagging after each input. After using Photoshop for a couple years over a few different Macs, I've noticed that lagginess would happen most often when I'm masking and isolating areas by hand. Comparing the iMac to the M1 using a raw photo from the D780, the iMac does not mask in real time. It takes one to two seconds before it registers the input after I let go of the mouse. This makes masking pretty difficult with the iMac. While the M1 is incredibly smooth in comparison, processing the input in real time. Using a PNG photo from the A7S III, the iMac is a little bit better taking between 0.75 and 1.13 seconds to register the input, while the M1 continues to be really smooth, but may actually be even smoother than the raw image from the D780. This is awesome to see from the M1, and it's the type of performance I'm always looking for, being able to make real-time changes while photo and video editing without any delays. Next, I tested how fast time lapses would render and export in Photoshop. Using the Sunrise time lapse consisting of 409 PNG photos shot with the D780, it took the iMac 2.62 minutes to render, 
and 3.62 minutes to export. The M1 was slower in the render, taking 3.45 minutes, and also slower in the export at 4.22 minutes. I did notice, however, that the M1 could not hold the render as shown by this green line. So when I tried to play the time lapse again on the M1, once it had supposedly rendered, it would again play back at only a few frames per second and then start to re-render the time lapse again. Conversely, on the iMac, you can see that the green bar covers the whole sequence, and after it renders, it plays back in my desired 24 frames a second. Trying the same sequence in JPEG, the results were very similar. The iMac rendered the 409 photo time lapse in 2.53 minutes and export in 3.65 minutes, while the M1 was barely behind this time, taking 2.65 minutes for the render, and tied the export time, also completing it in 3.65 minutes. The M1 couldn't hold a render for JPEG format either though. The last few tests I wanted to run aren't exactly photo related, but I thought they were worth knowing about. First one is transferring speeds of downloading a 100 gigabyte file off an SSD and then back onto the SSD. The file is a mix of 568 photos and videos and 100.28 gigabytes of data to be exact. Downloading the file off the SSD onto the iMac took 3.15 minutes, while the M1 was a bit slower at 4.27 minutes, and transferring the same file back onto the SSD from the iMac was 4.18 minutes and 5.47 minutes on the M1 MacBook Pro. Lastly, I just wanted to quickly discuss video editing on these Macs. I've already uploaded a separate video linked here and down below in the description where I extensively run only real world tests on the iMac and the M1, so I won't discuss any of the results here. But something I didn't go into in those videos is that I found some Apple screens are able to see more detail in the highlights of an image, while other Mac screens blow out those details. Looking at this image, you probably can't see very much detail in these clouds. The whites are blown out, removing that detail. But when looking at the scopes, you can see there are no sharp cutoffs like you'd expect when whites are truly overexposed and blown out. If I bring down the highlights, you should be able to see significantly more detail in the clouds than you could previously. For my Intel iMac, I'm actually able to see those details in the highlights of the clouds that are above 100 luma before I bring down the highlights. So for me, looking at the iMac screen, I can see the exact same amount of detail in those clouds before and after I bring down the highlights. Testing this out on the M1, I cannot see those details above 100 luma, and they only become visible when I bring down the highlights. The rule of thumb anyways is to keep your highlights below 100 luma so that when you're sharing your videos on other screens or platforms, those details aren't lost no matter what. But I thought this was interesting because the iMac is actually the only Mac I've tested that can see those additional highlight details. So does Apple's new generation of M1 chips stack up against the older Intel ones? Well, being that this is the most basic and entry-level M1 chip, and the Intel iMac is not only a desktop computer, but the last and most powerful Intel iMac there ever will be, the M1 is truly impressive, with it being barely behind in most of the tests, as well as matches and even did better than the iMac in some. So if this is what the M1 can achieve, how does the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the Ultra perform? For the answers to that, you'll have to check out my other comparison videos. I've tested the Pro and the Max, as well as did a whole bunch of video editing tests on all four Macs. So be sure to check those out. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.